Hello, everyone. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak at uh, this conference. And uh, I'm going to talk in this series of two talks about Maslow Index Formal and Higgers Lawyer Homology. And the main goal is to figure out a new uh, venatorial proof of this uh, uh, formula introduced by Robert Lipschitz. The outline for this first talk is as follows. I would first go over uh, some basics of Higgard lawyer homology. Uh, then I would uh, remind how one can compute the mass of index uh, of a given domain in a Higgard diagram. I'll speak about briefly uh, Robert Lipschitz's approach uh, to proof of uh, um, to prove in this formula. And finally, I'll talk about combinatorial techniques that, uh, that are available to work with arbitrary Hegel diagrams and arbitrary uh, domains. So uh, Hegel diagram is a certain gadget with which one can associate the free manifold and vice versa. Uh, to a free manifold, one can associate a certain, certain Higgard diagram. And it appears that Higgard for homology being defined uh, based off these Higgard diagrams uh, are actually uh, the invariants of free manifolds. So we assume that we are given some uh, surface of genus G with a certain metric. It won't be really important, uh, but we would use it for for some purposes. Then we pick a pick two collections of uh, simple closed curves on sigma, namely the collection alpha and collection beta. Uh, there are k curves uh, in each collection with k bigger uh, greater or equal than g. And uh, we assume that in each collection, uh, curves do not intersect each other. And curves from different collections intersect at 90 degrees angles and they intersect transversely. Uh, such uh, collection would, would be for the rest of the talk called a Heger diagram. Uh, sometimes in literature it's called an unpointed Heger diagram because uh, to associate a, a free manifold, actually, one needs to pick some points in. Uh, in regions where, where where regions are connected components of a complement uh, in sigma of these alpha and beta curves. But uh, for most of uh, these two talks, we'll be working with unpointed Heger diagrams. So here's an example. Here, g is equal to 2 and k is equal to 3. There are uh, three blue beta curves, and there are three uh, reddish alpha curves here. And one, one can uh, believe that all these angles are 90 degrees angles, as promised. Um, all right. Now how one uh, defines a, a Higgard floor chain complex. Uh, the generators in this Higgard floor, floor uh, chain complex uh, are collections, k collections of points of intersections between alpha and beta curves, such that each alpha curve in each beta curve appears only once. Uh, so, for instance, these pink crosses, we can denote them x1 and x2 and x3, they form uh, such a generator. So X consisting of X1, X2, X3 is a generator. Likewise, if we pick these orange uh, points, Y1, Y2, and Y3, with X3 being equal to Y3, they also form a generator 
um, for this chain complex. Uh, one can think of uh, such collection as a point in a symmetric case product, uh, which belongs to an intersection of real tori associated with alpha and beta curves, which are basically just the products of alpha and beta curves. Um, then uh, the main question is how to compute a differential uh, between two such uh, generators. And um, uh, for this, I would describe it briefly using uh, Lipschitz's cylindrical reformulation. So we consider a strip over our Riemann surface sigma with some nice almost complex structure J. And we consider in its boundary uh, two collections of cylinders over alpha and beta curves. So one collection um, sits on the side one of this uh, strip and the other on, on, on side of the zero. Uh, then we consider a model space of Riemann surfaces with boundary with uh, K negative and K positive boundary punctures, which would be in a moment sent to X and uh, Y points. So here X and Y are uh, some generators is above. And we denote by pi two of x y the set of homology classes of maps from such a Riemann surface to a pair uh, w and this uh, collection of cylinders, uh, such that uh, this map uh, converges to x or to y near negative or positive uh, punctures. Uh, then one may consider uh, a modeling space of j holomorphic curves connecting x to y of class phi, and we would denote it as uh, m phi. Uh, it appears that the modeling space, the dimension of this modeling space, uh, only depends on uh, phi, and uh, the differential of x in this uh, chain complex uh, is given by the count of points in this um, model space quotiented by the parallel translation along uh, this uh, vertical direction and target such that uh, for those y and phi such that this is a rigid model space. And as I, just, as I said before, this dimension really depends uh, only on pi due to uh, the seminal works of Ozad and Jabba. And it is equal to uh, the so-called mass of index of phi, and it would be denoted by mu of phi. So an example uh, of such a map is given here. So here, u is a map from such a surface S to this W given here through so this blue uh, curve, schematic curve here is uh, supposed to denote an image of this map U here. And one can see that on this, so this is uh, the direction from zero to one. On the side of zero, indeed the boundary is sent to and cylinders over beta curves on the side of um, one it is sent to the cylinders over alpha curves. And this point here is supposed to be a point of intersection of alpha and beta uh, curves and the same goes here. So these are at like plus infinity and uh, there would be like x times zero one where our map actually converges. Okay, so this is how uh, one can uh, compute the differential for this um, chain complex. So now it becomes immediate um, why one would need 
some nice formula uh, if one wants to com uh, for the mass of index if one wants to compute um Higgard floor homology well, assuming that they, they what what we just defined forms a homolo uh, homology well, forms a chain complex um and well Higgard floor homology is known to be uh like to be uh, combinatorially computable in 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 much better way than uh, other theories theories like ECH or Zyberg equation homology, and part of it, well, like a key ingredient in this is uh, this uh, mass of index formula due to Robert Lipschitz, which allows one to determine whether a given um, uh, class phi as mass of index one, sometimes people use mass of index uh, zero curves, sometimes mass of index zero, mass of index uh, two curves. I even saw a paper with mass of index four curves. I don't know <laughs> what's the actual reason behind it, but yeah. So sometimes uh, it is, uh, it is, important to be able to determine whether mass of index of a given um, candidate domain is equal to some particular number. Um, so one is especially useful to compute the differential. So let me remind you uh, how what the, the formula states. So uh, we pick a uh, point zeta i in each uh, region ri of our Higgard diagram. Uh, we put nr i of phi to be the intersection number between phi and this strip over point zeta i, and I would call it a coefficient of phi at region r i. And one can think of this as how many times phi covers this particular region r i when projected down to sigma. Um, given a point of intersection of alpha and beta curves, we can define the coefficient of phi at this point by averaging the coefficients of the regions to which this point belongs. So assume we have this point P and there are regions R1, R2, R3, and R4, then and P of phi is just the average of these of the coefficients at each of these regions uh, so can be given by the following formula um, then a shadow of of a domain phi is a two chain associated with it where you just when one just takes these uh, regions r in sigma with uh, the corresponding coefficients and one more thing that we need to know is how to compute the other measure of uh of the shadow of a uh, domain so we first define an early measure for each region uh by computing one an integral over r of the curvature of the metric that we've chosen in the very beginning times one over two pi uh, and then extended by linearity for all such two chains. And finally, uh, uh, Lipschitz's theorem states that mass of index of phi can be computed as an earlier measure of such a two chain plus uh, the sum of the coefficients of phi at the generators. Uh, here, I want to remark that if one uh, deals with the collection of points x size and x uh, we know basically a sum in x in x size uh, over all x size in a given collection. So let's see an example um, uh, of application of this formula. So these are uh, the domains which are usually called bygone and a rectangle. And let's see what the formula says here. So for instance, uh, for the bygone or x, we see that, uh, so this is our d of phi. 
here we see that only one region out of these four is covered. So we get one fourth. Or in Y of five, we get one fourth in the same fashion. And earlier measure can be computed for uh, for two and gone regions, so like disks with two and sides, and uh, one minus one fourth for each ninety degree angle, and plus one fourth for each uh, two hundred seventy degrees angle. Here, all the angles are ninety degrees, so we get one minus one fourth minus one fourth, which is one half, and we get the mass of index is the sum of all these three numbers, which is one. And this is what kind of one should expect that the uh, dimension of um, holomorphic maps from a strip to a strip is one dimensional and they all differ by the uh, parallel transport. Um, for the rectangle here we have for an X, we have two regions. So we get one fourth plus one fourth, which is one half. Same goes for in Y, this is one half. And now since uh, there are four uh, 90 degrees angles, we get one minus four times uh, one fourth and arrive at zero. Okay, get the mass of index here is again one. And these are the most standard, uh, the, the nicest regions which can appear in the, uh, in the differential, the polygons and rectangles, and uh, they usually do appear. All right, I'll briefly tell you about uh, uh, Robert's approach to proving this theorem. Uh, so I, I would first remind that the mass of index uh, is it just uh, some is it is a topological characteristic of phi, and it only depends on the homology class here. Uh, so the way uh, I'm not going to remind you what's the definition of it, but the way uh, one way to compute it is to pick some nice representative for which one can say something. So um, Robert's strategy is to construct a certain map uh, from some S uh, to this uh, strip over sigma, uh, which, which is supposed to be uh, J-homorphic um, near, it, it, it's, it, it, it's going to be an immersion and it's supposed to be J-homorphic uh, near the pre-images of the double points and near the pre-images of um, intersection of alpha and beta curves. And then um, uh, well, one can construct such a map such that the earlier characteristic for this, uh, for the domain of it is given by the following formula, where d plus and d minus are the numbers of um, uh, positive and negative double points of such an immersion. Then one can apply uh, the result from the Rasmussen's thesis, which says that the mass of index of phi can be given by the sum of the um, range uh, points of this composition, where the projection, uh, the cylindrical direction is basically the projection to this r times uh, zero one segment. Here we have. Um, and again, the same number uh, coming from uh, double points. And by riemann hurwitz theorem, the first uh, term here can be computed as the following uh, difference. Now, applying this result and uh, taking the sum of this, this, and this, one sees uh, that what is left is basically these uh part which is indeed what we saw in uh in Lipschitz's uh in Aslov index formula. Um yeah a, a remark here says that along the lines of the proof of the second step one can see that uh, the mass of index in cylindrical reformulation coincides with mass of index in uh 
with standard Oswald sub uh, interpretation. Um, all right, so this is uh, the sketch of this uh, quite tricky geometric proof. And now I would like to move um, uh, to a small discussion of what uh, combinatorial techniques are at disposal when one wants to work with an, uh, with an arbitrary Hegar diagram uh, of an arbitrary complexity. And I would like to uh, discuss Parker uh, and uh, one work on uh, algorithmical uh, computation of Hegar's floor homology. So here we can see the pointed Hegar diagram uh, of some free manifold. And we say that it is nice if any region that does not contain the, these base points, these mark points, is either a bigon or a square. Uh, then it appears that, the, 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 according to the proof of Sharker and one, that every closed oriented free manifold Y admits a nice Hegar diagram. Uh, and the main uh, application of this fact is that uh, given a nice Hegar diagram, one can compute uh, combinatorially the H of hat uh, homology of this free manifold. And the, the main, uh, the main uh, ingredient in this, when one has a uh, he Hegar diagram like this, one can show that all uh, domains of index one are actually either bigons or rectangles. And I want to warn you here that nothing like this holds like from um, the means of say mass of index uh, zero. So this is kind of part, part of the reason why this algorithm uh, cannot be applied to uh, directly uh, to, to prove a mass of index formula itself. So here is uh, briefly the strategy of the proof of uh, Sharkar and one. So what, what one can do with the even uh, Hegar diagram of a free manifold, one can apply uh, transformations which don't change the uh, free manifold associated with the Hegar diagram. And those are isotopies, handle slides, and stabilizations. Uh, actually, uh, for their proof, isotopies are more or less enough. And the, 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 the standard, uh, uh, the most standard isotopy is the one where uh, some uh, alpha curves are uh, performed in this fashion, and it's called the finger move. So assume you start with a Huber diagram where there is a six gone, and we want to reduce to a case when, where there are only bigons and rectangles. Uh, so one can take, say, this side, beta, one, for instance, and do a finger move like this. Then the new Hegar diagram doesn't have this six gone anymore. This becomes uh, to be a uh, four gone. This is now a four gone as well. But the problem comes here in the next um, uh, side of it. For instance, if it was a, even a rectangle, now it's a six gone and it is a problem. And the idea is to keep going and keep going until this finger arrives at some bygone. And when it arrives at a bygone, well, uh, the number of regions which are not bygones and rectangles are like the number of regions with many sides reduces at each step here. And in the very last step, this region is a, is a square. And this region here is a bigon. So this is sort of a win-win. But the problem is to, the main problem uh, of, of this strategy is to guarantee that, uh, that this finger will actually arrive at some point um, it's such a bigon. Well, and I'm 
not going to tell uh, uh, more about the details on this, but this is sort of uh, the generic picture of the air proof. And I guess uh, I'll stop here. <laughs>